In this video, I want to take a look at calculating uh, surface area on surfaces of revolution and pointing out some different ways you could do it depending on the situation that you have. Um, in the previous video, we looked at a curve where you had y was some function of x and we were rotating around the y axis. In that case, um, the x value was used as the radius. And ds we used as the square root of 1 plus dy dx squared, right? 1 plus the derivative squared times dx. Now, arc length uses the same, this is a little bit of arc length, right? So it uses the same formula. And we saw there that it was just as easy to do um, arc length with respect to x or calculate it with respect to y, depending on how the function was given. So if you had this function here, um, but had it in terms of x as a function of y, and you're still rotating around the y axis, right, so you've got, you've got now x is a function of y, so it might look something like this and you're rotating still around the y-axis, well, you're generating a lampshade here, whatever, and you're trying to find the surface area, well, it's still a matter of take each little bit of line segment, you know, each little bit of curve, turn it into a line segment, rotate that around to generate one of those um, whatever those are, frustrums. Anyway, just the, the edge, a little strip of cone, right? In that case, the radius is still horizontal. You need a 2 pi times that x, which, which we had up here, right? So now, uh, the x is still the radius, but everything is going to be written in terms of y. So in this case, um, x is the radius, but x is equal to f of y. And the ds will be written in terms of y. Uh, so the square root of 1 plus dx dy squared times dy. So my, my surface area integral now looks like, and this is going to be, uh, let's say, from c to d in the y direction, of 2 pi times x, but x is here f of y, times the square root of 1 plus dx dy squared dy. It's still 2 pi times a radius times a little bit of arc length. It's just a matter of how is that radius expressed. Is it expressed in terms of x, which it would have been up here, right? The surface area on that one was the integral from a to b of 2 pi, sorry, 2 pi x times the square root of 1 plus dy dx squared dx. The radius is x, the radius down here is still x, but x is written as a function of y, and we're doing this integral with respect to y here, where that one was done with respect to x. Arc length in terms of x, or arc length in terms of y. Okay. Um, likewise, you could rotate around the x-axis. So let's take a look now at rotating around the x-axis. It's the same idea. Um, I'll start off with you know, y is some function of x between a and b. Um, you're going to rotate around the x-axis now. Um, so it looks like this. Okay. I'm not generating a volume. I'm just, I'm not taking this region and rotating it to generate the volume. I'm just taking the curve itself to generate a surface, and I'm looking for the surface area. Just like before, each the curve is cut up into a bunch of little line segments. Each line segment gets rotated around to generate a little conical strip here. And you're looking for the surface area of that strip. Um, and then add them all up. So in this case, the radius of the strip now is a vertical thing. That radius is up and down. That's the y spot right there. 
So when I look at the area of that thing, it's going to be 2 pi times a radius to get the circumference going around, but the radius now is not x. The radius is y. Um, so 2 pi times y, there's a question of how am I going to do the arc length? Is the arc length going to be the square root of 1 plus, and in this case, since I have y as a function of x, I want the derivative of that. So 1 plus dy dx squared dx. So this integral is going to be in terms of x. So I need the radius in terms of x. Well, the radius in terms of x is y. y is f of x. Integrate from a to b. Right? That's the surface area. Still, 2 pi times a radius times a little bit of arc length. But that radius now is the y value. But since I'm doing the arc length, as an integral dx, then I need to do that y value as a function of x, and that's that curve. Right? Likewise, if I had um, this written the other way now, so if I had the curve written as x is a function of y, so here we go, we're going to redraw this again. Let's grab blue. If I have it like this now, where x is a function of y, but I'm rotating around the x-axis, right, like this, right, generating whatever that generates. Again, I'm not calculating a volume here. I'm just taking the curve to generate a surface. So I'm going to calculate the surface area. Each little line segment gets rotated. You know, the curve is cut up in a bunch of line segments. Each line segment gets rotated around to generate a little conical strip. Um, the area of that strip is 2 pi times the radius to get the distance around times a little bit of um, that little bit of arc length. So now with the, sorry, this is from C to D here, with x written as a function of y, it's going to probably be easier to calculate the arc length as 1 plus dx dy squared dy. So this whole integral is now in terms of y, so from c to d on the y axis. But I need 2 pi times a radius, 2 pi. Now the radius is still this vertical thing here. That's a y value right here, minus the y value there, but that's 0. So I need the y value as a function of y. Well, that's just y. This integral here and this integral here are really the same thing. 2 pi times a y value times a bit of arc length. This one's written with everything in terms of x. So the y value has to be written in terms of that function of x. Here, this is written in as a function of y. So the y value as a function of y is just y. In general, calculating the surface area is a revolution. You need an integral of 2 pi times a radius times ds. Make your choice. You rather calculate the arc length in terms of x or in terms of y. Once you make that choice, you've got to then write the radius in terms of that variable and the limits of integration in terms of that variable. But anyway, it works. So let's do uh, one example uh, here. Let's rotate. Let's rotate the same curve we did on the last video, but let's rotate it around the y axis, or the x axis this time. So again, I want to look at y equals x squared. I'm going to rotate it around the x axis. So it's going to go this way, and I'm generating like a trumpet flare here. I'm not calculating the volume of the trumpet flare, I'm calculating the area of the trumpet flare. So, um, here we go. Um, y equals x squared. Uh, x is between um, 0 and 1. Um, a little behind here. So this would be the integral from 0 to 1. I'm going to do the arc length in terms of x because I've got y as a function of x. So this is 1 plus the derivative 2x squared times dx. And now I need 2 pi times the radius. Well, the radius now of any one of these little line segments as you rotate it around. That radius is an up and down radius. I'm rotating around the x-axis. 
So the radius is perpendicular to the x-axis. It's the y value. Well, the y value is equal to x squared. Okay, this is the surface area. I want to do the same problem, but think of this now in terms of, instead of y as a function of x, let's write it as x is the square root of y. And again, uh, limits of integration are still 0 to 1, but their y value is now between 0 and 1. Right? I'm still going to rotate around the x-axis, so I'm still generating the same um, surface that I did there. The, the integrals will look different, but the answer should be the same. So I'm going to write it this way now. The, arc, the little bit of arc length with x as a function of y, it's going to be easier for me to do this in terms of 1 plus. Now the derivative, dx dy, this is y to the half power, so the derivative would be 1 over 2 times the square root of y squared, right? That's 1 half, y to the minus a half, um, dy. So with x as a function of y, arc length is going to be easier to do this way. So now I need 2 pi times this radius, right? For each value of x, or sorry, for each value of y, uh, for each value of y, I've got a little bit of arc length here, and I'm rotating it around to generate this this little strip of area, and the radius is an up and down radius. That's a y value right here. So what's the y value as a function of y? It's y. Which values of y am I interested in? 0 to 1. Okay. Now those look a little different, um, but I am going to um, do them on my calculator and see what happens. Uh, let's see if I can pull the calculator up here. I should be able to. All right, so this first integral here, I've got math. Let's turn it on here. Math 9, 2, pi, x squared, times the square root of 1 plus 4x, I said 4, but it came out as a 2, let's type a 4, 4x squared, it's a matter of whether the 2 is in, if you square this out, 2x times 2x, right, you get 4x squared, okay, so let's close the square root there, let's put a comma x, comma 0, comma 1, and I get, let's close that, and it says dun, 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 dun. the area is 3.8. I lost the number already here. 3.8097 or whatever, right? 3.8097 and some change. Now let's try this, this one down here. I'm going to type that in. I really want you to see what the calculator does as I do this. Because sometimes there's you know two different ways to do this. And although both the answers should be the same, the calculator actually is going to have an easier time doing this one than that one. But let's, let's take a look and see what happens. So let's look at math, function int, so math 9, 2 pi y, oh, I'm just going to use x just because it's easier on my calculator, 2 pi x times the square root of 1 plus, so this is going to be 1 divided by 4 divided by y, but I'm just using an x, um, close the square root, and comma x comma 0 comma 1, and go. And it sits there and it thinks for a while. Oh, and it finally came up with an answer. But I don't know if you noticed um, how much longer it took to do this one than that one. Some of the calculators you'll actually find will sit there and think for five, ten minutes and then finally say, eh, can't do it. Um, one of the issues here is there's an asymptote involved that um, when you're at zero, you got the square root of zero in the denominator. You're, you're looking at an improper integral, and it just takes it a while to figure it out. 
Um, so anyway, there's times when you want to do the other way. 